Now when it comes to that 5.8 and the aftershocks felt throughout the Central Valley between Fresno and Bakersfield, there's been a lot of discussion about it. 23 ABC's Daniela Garrido breaks down what Dr. Lucy Jones, a seismologist, had to say about this event. She joins us live. Daniela? That's right. Good morning, Mike. Well, we were both here last summer when that 7.1 magnitude earthquake hit, and I can personally tell you I did not feel that one, but I did feel yesterday's 5.8 magnitude earthquake pretty intensely here in Northwest Bakersfield. So you can't help but wonder, just a week and a half since the anniversary of last summer's earthquake, are these two related? We spoke with a local seismologist on what this means. After every earthquake, there is a 5% chance of something bigger following it, according to Dr. Lucy Jones. So now you know that you've had a 5.8. And uh, you can now say, well, probably that's it. But for the next week, you've got a slightly increased risk. Wednesday morning, a 5.8 magnitude earthquake shook the Central Valley, followed by 4.6, 3.6, and 3.1 aftershocks, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. We've already had, I don't know, half a dozen magnitude three since this earthquake happened. And they're dying, the number's going down, but we're continuing to have them. So we're continuing to get bigger aftershocks. And one of them could grow into a big one. Just two days ago, a 4.6 magnitude earthquake occurred. Dr. Lucy Jones is calling this a foreshock to Wednesday morning's earthquake. If tomorrow we had a six and a half, we'll go and change the name and call the 5.8 another foreshock. And, and foreshocks and main shocks, they look the same. I mean, a foreshock is just a main shock that happened to have a really big aftershock. Residents from Fresno to Bakersfield say they received notifications from the new earthquake alert system. What this system is doing is telling you that an earthquake's already begun, but the waves haven't gotten to you yet. So the waves travel at two miles a second. So if you're 30 miles away from the earthquake, it's going to take 15 seconds for that to get there. And it maybe takes five to 10 seconds for the system to figure out that the earthquake's happening and calculate everything and send out the message. These temblers come just about a week and a half from the anniversary of the 7.1 and 6.4 magnitude earthquake that shook Ridgecrest last summer. This is a different fault than the Ridgecrest earthquake, and it's far enough away that it doesn't fall within the traditional definition of aftershocks. Rather, we would look at it as its own earthquake. Now, as Dr. Lucy Jones mentioned, we could see more of these aftershocks and even another main shock in the near future. So now would be a good time to start planning that earthquake preparedness plan with your family. For now, we're live in Bakersfield. I'm Daniela Garrido, 23BC News, connecting you.